Hey guys, Chocolate Monkey here. I want to bring you a quick uh, first impressions video, this time on the Tier 3 British Premium Ground Attack Aircraft, the CAC CA1 Wirraway. Um, so, first impressions of this aircraft. First of all, looks far too much like a Texan in my opinion. Every time I see this aircraft I'm reminded of the 1970 film, Tora 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 and the uh, the Texans and the B-T-13s used to play the Japanese aircraft in there. It's a great little film and this aircraft always reminds me of that. And uh, Every time I play this aircraft or watch that film I want to go and build a model kit of a Texan and just whack some Japanese uh, Navy um, markings on it and paint it in a, either a Japanese Navy grey or dark green. But enough of that, that's irrelevant for the moment. Uh, we're away. Unlike the previous video that I did, which was just gameplay on the Blenheim Mark IV, I do find this aircraft fun to actually take out ground targets with, even at Tier 3. Um, it's not great with regards to the experience that it earns or the credits that it gains, but it is great in terms of just being um, a fun aircraft that you can have a bit of a laugh with and, you know, you can kind of play it, I'd say, more like a heavy multi-role fighter than a ground attack aircraft, because as you can see there's two forward fighting machine guns here, and then there's a single machine gun uh, facing out the rear of the aircraft. All of them I think are 7.7s because that seems to be the standard calibre for British machine guns. Uh, but at tier 3 they do quite a nice amount of damage and the aircraft is just about manoeuvrable enough that if a fighter isn't giving you any attention or paying attention to the fact he's being shot at, you can take out and will take out aircraft in this, even things like I-16s if they give you long enough trigger time on them. But you can also go after other ground attack aircraft or heavy fighters that you happen to catch down low. It really depends on what the game throws at you. With regards to outboard ordnance, you can see here there's four bombs under the aircraft. Each of these are 250 pound bombs, I believe. Yep, four 250 pound bombs which it carries, uh, which is the only outboard weapon option. Or you can choose to demount them, though why you choose to do that on a ground attack aircraft, I'm not quite sure. Uh, as you can see for service, I haven't got this aircraft specialised just yet. Uh, I'm, as up here, I'm quite a fair way off, but I do intend to get this aircraft there. It's just one of those little novel things that might eventually happen over time. But for equipment, I've basically gone for everything that helps me with my survivability, be it, you know, um, improved resistance to damage for the tail and wings, uh, pilot resistance and gunner resistance to injuries, and then I've gone for stock strengthened hard points over the bomb site because I prefer faster weapon reload over the bombs being accurate and then having longer to reload. A drop in aircraft speed really doesn't matter, you're playing a ground attack aircraft, you're never going to be fast to begin with, so, you know, hurting that even more doesn't really matter. Consumables have gone for improved fragmentation, simply because it's the only one you can get for credits, and it improves damage caused by bombs and rockets, which is always nice for these bombs. Universal ammunition, simply because again, only one available for credits, and it increases the chance of causing fire and critical damage. That includes increased chance for fires on ground targets, as well as fires and critical damage on aircraft if you're shooting at them. And then for consumables, I've picked up a fire extinguisher over getting the first aid dressing package, because if this thing catches fire, you want to put it out. Crew injuries usually aren't that bad, uh, so you just kind of want to get rid of fires to be there because losing hit points over time is not something you want to be doing in a ground attack aircraft when you're going to have all that AAA fire to worry about and you're going to be nearly constantly harassed by enemy fighter aircraft as well, especially if you're trying to take ground points off them. Upgrades, premium aircraft, nothing to worry about there. Um, this crew is pretty basic. With regards to crew skills, I don't think I'm going to mention anything here. It's kind of just, you know. I use it more as a crew trainer than anything else. I don't know if I'll keep a dedicated crew for it. I might, of course, because there's not many British ground attack aircraft full stop, but you know, you could, in theory, if you want to, use this to train a, a pilot and then, you know, retrain for something else if you just want a cheap low tier uh, pilot trainer for the British. Uh, with regards to the gunners, I think there's very few aircraft in the British territory that actually get the option to use a gunner. Um, which is the first two heavy fighters, the Blenheim F and the Bow Fighter, the Mosquito and everything past that I don't think has them, and you get them on the Skewer and the Demon. Outside of that, we're away gets it, the Blenheim gets it, and I think that's pretty much it for rear gunners on British aircraft. So, yeah, the rear gunning training isn't really that useful for the British, but pilot training is always nice, and it's cheap, and it's low tier, and it's fun. Why not? Um, with that being said, I'm going to leave it there. Only a quick one this time. There's only going to be one battle coming up because most of the games that I had in this thing were kind of disappointingly short. There was one which lasted for quite a reasonable amount of time and I've really got to show this aircraft doing both ground attack rolls and also getting the chance to shoot down some aircraft. So you get to see that. Um, came first place on the team. Pretty nice score. 
Unfortunately, we were in like not the best matchmaking because the enemy team had a flight of two pilots that I think were both in aircraft that had got the specialist status. So, seal clubbing down at low tiers, it's going to be inevitable, regardless of the new specialist system they've put in. Um, yeah, it's just a part of life with games like this and World of Tanks, World of Warships, and any games where players that are far more experienced than uh, you know the guys that are joining in that can play down low tier. I mean, hell, I'm doing it, but yeah, you know, I'm doing it in a real way. I'm not exactly going to change the world anytime soon. Um, yeah, enough for me rambling. I'll let you watch the gameplay, guys. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Approaching the front line. Off we go.
The enemy is about to win. Push harder. Be advised, a line of thunderstorms is approaching. We'll soon be unable to provide support. Do you copy? Over. you any longer. The storm is too heavy. Do you copy? Over. Attention all aircraft, fall back and regroup. <laughs> 